Well, welcome, folks. It is intercoal day here. We hope you can hear us out there. It is a massive day. My name is Tony Neal, and I'm welcoming Indy Rogers. How are you, Indy? I'm all right, thank you, Tony. I'm just coping with the noise right now. We're right behind the Christian Brothers cheer squad. And uh, we might just take in a bit of this noise until uh, it dies down a bit, and we'll get into dissecting the game. See the Black Friars there, he's like the leader of the cheer squad, that gentleman out there. Yeah, there's no real leader in this cheer squad, I reckon, because they're all equally as vocal. In fact, I reckon they'll be competing with their own fans to see who's making the most noise. The cheer squads are yelling at each other, Tony. All right, well, let's dissect the game. It is Black Friars versus CBC down here at Prospect Oval and a little bit muddy in places. We've got the coach of... Blackfriars, of course, is Brett Knowles, and the coach of CBC is a very well-known coach through the sample, player and coach, Ron Fuller, and uh, there are more, more support staff coming in, Indy, and I can tell you in late-breaking news down at the soccer, CBC have defeated Blackfriars two goals to two. Yeah, so the soccer match hopefully setting the tone for Christian Brothers to capitalise on a footy match similar because, well, we're going to have to go through some of the last few results. So in. Let's have a look at yeah, let's have a look at some of these stats we've got in front of us as the teams are warming up. Yes, yeah, so for those curious, this is the 16th annual inter-college co-curricular carnival between Blackfriars Priory School and Christian Brothers, but we're going to be looking at the last five seasons in particular. Back in 2016. A very close nail-biting thriller. Eight goals, nine at eight goals, eight. Blackfriars wow. coming out on top. The next year, 2017, Blackfriars are winning again, this time more comfortably, 124 to 58. So it's an 86 point margin there. 2018, we saw the match abandoned, but coming back the next year, CBC finally managed to win their first in a while, winning 79 points to 42, a 27 point win in the end. Blackfriars also defeated CBC in the COVID hampered 2020 season, 132 to 70. So that was a very interesting 62 point win as well. And last year, Blackfriars 71 to 59. So that was a two goal match. And you go from 62 point win one year to only 12 the next. You limit it down by 50. Do you feel as though that could be momentum building for CBC to get another win tone? Well, it could be that. And the cheer squad currently is about twice the size. And I reckon just that could be the soccer team, I reckon, coming back. They've got a cup in their hands as well. So. They are chop the block all the way from the fence down the bottom there up to the commentary position. We have parents to, and teachers to the left, teachers in front, and the Blackfriars are just to our right. And uh, we can tell the viewers at home there is a gap between the two teams. So the build-up is coming. Our umpires today are Payne Souter, Dylan Howarth and Leon Dolling. Uh, we had a chat with them in the middle indie as well, and uh, they've decided they're going to ball it up on the actual grassy area rather than in the mud. Uh, a little bit about Intercol itself. Yes, well, we thank all of you for joining us. So for those curious, Intercol 2022, being the 16th annual Intercollege co-curricular carnival between the two teams, is a significant m moment on the calendar of both of our proud schools with 25 events being conducted across just six days. Approximately 600 students will be involved with many more as spectators and supporters. Intercol marks a respectful rivalry between two proud Adelaide institutions built on a determination to be one's best, to excel individually and as a member of a team, to play a role and to represent our schools in the best possible light. On behalf of our respective school communities, we take this opportunity to thank all those staff who worked to ensure a successful Intercol Carnival in 2022. And Tony, it should be absolutely cracking today because the atmosphere is giving us a pretense of what we can do. Oh, have a look at the little fella down here, Birds of the Mind. He is an absolute ripper. And uh, I think we're just getting him on camera now. And he's a bit of a pot stirrer. They had a big ghetto blaster out on the ground. The atmosphere and Intercol uh, is played every year just between the same two colleges. We've seen number 34 in there for Blackfriars, Joshua Stodden, and also Finn Hudson, co captains, and they're in there with Max Daniels. So let's have a look here, Indy. I don't think there's any real advantage with uh, there's no breeze out there as we speak, so umpire just adjudicating here. 
Up it goes. And uh, Blackfriars have won, and they're kicking to the left of screen, the farmer end, of course, down here at Prospect, and to the right is the Robram end of the ground. So all set for this uh, scintillating battle as we speak. We walked into the ground, there was hardly anyone there, and then, uh, boy, oh boy, did it fill up. Yeah, just while... they all just popped up all of a sudden, Tony. They yep. popped out of nowhere, in fact. It went from zero to 100 pretty quickly. And... Well, you talk about them kicking to the farm end, but I reckon the real farm is in the middle of the ground, Tony. So yeah. the umpires have deliberately have that, elected yeah. not to bounce the ball in the midst of the mud because they might find some manatees swimming in there, some pigs having a bit of a bath in there. There could be anything, really, that goes quite deep. So they're going to be bouncing the ball just outside of it. Yes, there's actually, from, you can't see them from here, but there are actually a couple of puddles in there as well. So uh, it is very moist in the middle. Just a quick one, the Code of Conduct, uh, so we hope the grandstand stays upright while we're up here, but the Code of Conduct is recognise that Intercold provides a unique opportunity to bring our schools together through competition to build strong relationships and lifelong memories. Intercold provides a platform for a friendly rivalry based on respect for each other, our institution and ourselves. We understand that we not only have the honour and traditions of competition between our schools, we are privileged to have the opportunity to leave a legacy for those who will follow us. Intercol allows for us to show our school spirit in a positive manner whilst also respecting our opponent. Having said that, Indy, it is game on as they line up in the middle umpire just bouncing the ball around. And I'll tell you what, they're keen on the ground. We're keen up here in the stands. Big number 11 there is uh, Joseph Haskey, of course, in the ruck. We will say number 20 for Christian Brothers is Joseph Kostanik is out at Norwood. And watch out for number 33, Thomas Scully. He, of course, is in the state under 18s and we are underway and up they go. Big number 30 is Fionn Keane, but just out into that mud pit. So there's a sense of theatre already. And he is swapped, swapped in the mud. And that is Daniel Shepperton coming forward. Nice kick out the space, and that's a courageous mark as the crowd erupts here. Young Toby Kay comes in. So Toby Kay sets it up to the tip of the square. The pack goes up. No mark comes down. The crummers are waiting, though. Can CBC keep possession of the ball? They've got a tackle for it now. Blackfry is desperate to get out of trouble, and they've got clever ball use to do so. Down the ball field. comes out wide. There's a whistle. Down It'll be field. a free kick downfield. Ball coming back to the Blackfriars player here, and we believe this one is Jack Slavin. In fact, no, it's actually going to go to instead the middle of the ground. No mark taken once again, the pack went up. No holding the ball to the dismay of the CBC squad, but it does come out the other end. Snap towards the far side. CBC desperate to apply the pressure. The tackling is there, potentially without the ball in possession. No free kick given away. A second tackling attempt goes in, and now we do have a ball up on the far wing, Tony. So ball up right on that far wing, as you've called it. Those cars out there, I don't think they'd be the players, just quietly, but uh, great crowd over this side of the ground as the ball comes in. A little bit of uh, teamwork there by CBC. Running forward near Scully now. This is a state under-18 player. He's about seven foot when I walked past him earlier. Long way down, but very well done. They're out of trouble here. And nice handball over by Fionn Keane. They're inside 50 again. This boy's got the Jets on. He's running into goal. What a great pick up. And he's just pushed at the last moment. Jackson Ritter. And that is, uh, I'd suggest, one of the best points in the uh, 100 umpires of up here have called in the back. But they're out now. And they're outside 50 Blackfriars. I'll tell you what, there was fantastic the pressure on the kicker, that's what Angus it was. Angus Irving it was just here. They're inside 50 again here as well, Indian. That is a great kick, he's dropped it. Number 42. So we're going to have to chase up a couple of uh, numbers. 42, of course, was Lachlan Coles for CBC. Yeah, there's a number 52 for Blackfriars out there who we haven't currently got the name of, but we'll keep you up to date on that as soon as we get some information. Meantime, Blackfriars come out with the tap and the clearance. Go out to the far wing. No mark taken in the one-on-one -on -one contest. They've got to retaliate with some tackling pressure, but CBC keep their composure, come out with it. Max Daniel, the captain, sends it into the Ford 50, although it's a bit of a rough delivery. 
The Crummers will try and make something out of it, but a ball smothered on the line. It could go over the line at some stage. No, Black Friars have actually kicked it out here and they find a successful target. Marked it out on the far side. Hard to see much from here. The kick ineffective though and intercepted by Anthony Sosa from CBC. He slows up, delivers a safe and small drop punt. Oh, and a bit of a sidestep and a dodge around CBC, pulling out all the tricks here. No mark taken, just outside the forward arc, holding the man free kick coming here. CBC with an opportunity to send it back in. So right now, a lot of the territory being dominated by the Christian brothers, and that is a fantastic forward 50 pass. It'll get them their first legitimate set shot of the game. Oh, and a player tossed off the ball. There's a bit of push and shove. No 50 meter penalty given away. Now, trying to get a look at exactly who's taking the set shot. I believe it's Thomas Scully. He's got some decent height on him. Pretty good mark. And for those keeping updates, so uh, it's 4B for Blackfriars, who's wearing number 52 out there. So thank you very much for getting that update. Bargy, bargy, bargy going on. Yeah, careful not to give away a 50 here, although it's a pretty simple set shot as it is. Converts it, as expected. The crowd will tell you the story. We got our first goal of the Intercom match here, and it's CBC, courtesy of Thomas Scully. State under 18 player, Tony. Correct, and uh, yeah, it's interesting he's starting up forward because he's an absolute giant. So whoever's standing in has got their work cut out. So they've got the value of playing him up forward and still having a ruckman down there. I reckon that was... Uh, let's wait and see this time. Is it Dutton in the middle? I reckon it might be. Yeah, number 30. He's, he's got a good good build on him too. Big the chest out. Nice, strong lad. And you see in the middle there's uh, not really a match-up. They're two or three metres off each other and Dutton wins it again. Oh, not quite out. Came out and then came back inside because of the mud. That call's come from the umpire about 40 metres away. Ooh, the player here, they're going to come inside 50 again now. Just kicks it straight to the Black Friars player, and I reckon he's got zinc cream on. Ball just bobbling around there. Well, great recovery, quick hands out. That was Harrison Delimore. Now they come wide with the switch, and running on to this is uh, Forby, and that's a nice outstretched mark by young Nathaniel Forby. Gives to the runner outside, which then gives you the boundary line to work towards. And as we can see, I'm always a little bit wary about that kick or the handball outside. And that was Sebastian Taylor. And we've got a, uh, well, a kick coming because it is the last The last touch. touch rule, that's right. And they weren't quite able to get a touch on it. In fact, I believe the Christian Brothers players deliberately elected not to spoil the ball because they knew that they would have gotten it back for free anyways. They've given it away for free, though, in the middle of the ground here. Maybe not. Tackley Pretcher's got to come in, and they're right in the middle of the mud. This is where they wanted to avoid going, but I reckon sometimes the players would like to dare their opposition to come into the dirt with them just to see if they can stomach through it. Well, if, I think if you're a good player, you've got to be able to play wet and dry weather, and uh, there's a player covered in mud as we speak, and, and that's what you can do, that little chip kick, 15 to 20 metres, and uh, gives it across to Sam Ellis, and he pops it back into the mud. So we've got a whole football oval here with about 20 metres square of mud, and they've put the ball into the 20 metre square of mud. So a, a sense of theatre by the teams as they come out wide, player all out on his own, the umpire's called it back, as he too tries to get out of the bog with the hat on. So here we are, edge of the cricket pitch. Tries to get it inside 50, but you can see that ball dropping short because unsettled with his feet. And will they switch? They, that Sebastian Taylor, they have tended to do this. Nathan Forby, so we already can see Blackfriars with a bit of a pattern. Switch of play now, a nice long kick down the half forward, but they've set up the wall very well, CB3, and that is a great pair of hands. Yeah, reliable overhead marking. It's not quite wet weather football, but the ground has been a little bit wet and dewy throughout the week as it comes down the line, across the near wing, now tipping into the centre square. Blackfriars get out of trouble for the moment on the back of a kick from O'Riordan. Ineffective overall, and it will have to come down to turf. Tackling pressure applied by Fian Keane, the vice captain today. Blackfriars now coming out with some clever handball work, and that's a good kick coming off the boot of... Vanderwood. It goes oh. all the way to the line. In fact, I reckon it's been hammered over for a goal. Well, 
have a look. I reckon that might have been Joseph Haskey down that other end. And the CBC uh, guys are just giving it a little bit here to the uh, Blackfriars crowd. Well, there's a fair bit because up goes the cup. We'll find out in a moment what that cup is actually from. I reckon that's the soccer cup, but we'll find out. So uh, we do have a very close game on our hands here, Indy. Yeah, so for those just joining us, CBC did win the soccer intercol match earlier today, 4-2. to two. And now it's a question of who can get the last laugh. Ball thrown up in the centre. The rucks go at it. No clear victor in the ruck, but a high tackle applied. They're going to come out with the free here. In fact, it's going to Shepherdson. CBC with the clearance. They hit a target. They like the look at the near side. They want to find a lead in the pocket. Beautiful spoil there by the defender and Finn Hudson, the captain. That is a captain's worthy spoil. Because I reckon his opponent was on the lead then and that could have led to another free goal from the free kick given away in the centre. So they're inside 50 again. You can see the big ruckman there, Thomas Dutton. He just got a... Reminds me a bit of the guy that played at... Uh, well, he's been, been a bit of everywhere. Anyway, it comes around. I'll come, that name will come to me in a moment. As around it comes now. Daniel Shepherdson. So number 30 is Fian Keane, the vice captain that I've been talking about. So they do the switch. They, they go the 45 either side. They've gone out the other side. A little fumble there. That can be costly. Support comes. Well done there. That looks like Matthew... So it may have been Lachlan Kuzner. They go down now strongly. And uh, very good defence again by CBC. Yeah, they've They're been taking clear a down the wing. Yep. It's come to the stage where they'll have to work from the back end of the ground, though. And that hasn't been an easy task throughout the game. In fact, playing off from the mark, the CBC individual was tackled. Now the ball comes to turf again. Christian Brothers trying to get it out of trouble. No mark taken in the awkward aerial ball. But a lot of tackling pressure being applied here on the far wing. We will get another ball up as a result. You can see the teams are still spread out. So length versus width. And they've, they've kept their positions. Because you do have the 6-6-6 six, six, six on the centre ball up. But after that you can move around the ground a bit. But a little bit of that. You can see 8 or 10 players just around the ball. The wingers on this side of the ground are pretty much in the centre of the, of the ground. Uh, very open game. And hence... CBC come forward again, nice kick forward. Blackfriars can't quite take it. Industrious there by Targ Machioro, I believe that is. Ball on the ground, desperation there. Number 39 is uh, Angus Irving getting down the ground. Big Thomas Sutton puts, uh, sorry, that is Fionn Keane puts his hand up. Wow, him up. massive throw up from the umpire yeah. there. Look Came all the way to the top of the stand the and back down. No. Interesting, the winger, number 45 there, Ethan Kelsey, you can see on screen. Now, he was down on the wing a moment ago on young Forby. they both come down into that pack. So, quick clear and kick. Gets to that player just as I speak. Jeez, ragged old to the ground, and he's caught holding the ball. So, they were down on the wing a moment ago. Player, a nice, neat-looking left foot kick, but he gives it plenty of air, which gives CBC a chance. And their pressure, I've been very impressed with Indy. Free kick. Free kick for high conduct. A bit of push and show coming in as well. Fans asking for 50. They won't get it. Jed Walker to take the free kick from the boundary line. A cult look at the end in two, not he? Assessing the options. He takes a step out wide. Runs out. There's Not another whistle kick. here. And it's going to go the other way. Well, that's a missed opportunity there from CBC. It comes back to Sebastian Taylor. Blackfriars are wasting no time trying to go on here, but it's marked again by Jed Walker. Oh, and it wasn't paid. The umpire said that the ball must have been touched off the boot. Player Crowd just, not uh, too happy with it. It caught them by surprise. Christopher Chen just limping off there too for CBC early in the game. Come forward now. Good attack by the young man, and that was uh, Finn Hudson, the captain. Co-captain, they're out wide now. That is a great smother early in the game. Second effort, well backed up. Puts it to space but gives time for the CBC player. And that's uh, Errol Costas to come across. Effective spoil all bounced out of it. There's three on to two out here and it's a real wrestle on the ground. They're going to spin around, just get a kick away now. 
one-on-one -on -one that we're talking about, and that's uh, Matthew Altamir and... I mean, sorry. <laughs> so there it is again, Thomas uh, Scully. So he's, he's a real problem for them up forward, uh, Indy, I'd suggest. That height, they're just not going to get near him and big, long, telescopic arms and quality player. Yeah, well, his performance so far has shown that it's no surprise that someone like him has been appointed captain. So vice captain, he comes in. She's a high kick too. High and not a grab, but almost a touchdown on the uh, on the ground there. And that is uh, the player we've been talking about, Fionn Keane. So vice captain to vice captain there. And I've uh, locked his game as well. Will they push it through here? Black Fries, they attempt to, and it bounces. Just on the line, taken across there, and that was uh, Dylan Clayton popping it across. So gains the extra meterage on the kick in, comes on, but it's a geez high over the back, and a little push given. Oh, he's uh, he's tripped over a blade of grass there, I reckon. Indy. So uh, they'll load up here. Will he give the handball? No, he won't. Black Friars come along the wing now. Big pack forms up. They go and down they come. So it's over the back, two on one. The one wins out. Three on one it is now. So he drags that in. And umpire's looking and say he had no other option. Drags it in and uh, back line pressure. As we see Big Scully just coming off for rest now. And uh, coming on, Taj Marciuro, who's been influential already. There he is at the back of the pack. They come inside, Black Fries immediately look across the ground. Two players in front. Is it just a bomb? It is, which gives CBC a chance. And they have two players to choose from. The defence for the Christian brothers standing up really well here. They come out wider. That ball isn't going to be paid in intercepts, but I believe that's going to be paid in the back infringement. Just uh, while that player slowly gets up, there are actually two cups here up, up here in the crowd, and it's the second and first division uh, soccer team Cups, they've both won today and they're here supporting as well. Ball comes inside 50. A set shot opportunity here for Blackfriars. One which I don't think they've gotten in this game so far, Tony. No, you're correct. Been a bit of pressure. Last goal dribbled through. I reckon this is the guy that scored the last one. Uh, I think it's Joseph Kelly. Set nice sail all the way to the line. I don't think it's quite gone over. In fact, it stays alive. Play is squirming to get it over now. It's going to be a ball up before it can be rushed for behind. 15 umpires there, and they all stop and put their hands up. And uh, ball was still in play. Tapped out, trying to get it to the far side to make sure it's not rushed over for a behind. That was a strategic decision, and that's kind of a half win because now it will be thrown in and it will give the forwards more space to work with. You see the CBC, every time it's been down back, it always seems to be a two on one matchup, doesn't it? They. Uh, Really do that well, and that pressure's really good down there. So I throw in now in the farmer end, you can see on Prospect Oval, players streaming forward. It's anyone's ball, a quick kick out of the pack, and that is, and that might have been Dominic Carubia, number 26, with his first. Sorry, wrong team, Dylan Clayton. It looks like we just have to wait with a bit of mud and uh, the numbers. A little bit far away, so we'll wait and just make sure as the ball comes back in the middle. But it's the quick goal coming back into the centre here. All of a sudden, the scoreboard favours Black Prior, despite all of the field advantage which CBC have had for most of this quarter. They've got a lot of inside 50 entries, but it now stands one goal to eight to two goals nil. Black Prior's in front. Low for the ball to come up. Not quite sure if there was any triple six infringement there. Doesn't look so to be the case. Tackling pressure applied. Well done by Shepherdson. I wonder if Shepherding has become a key trade of his, no pun intended. Coming out with the clearance. Tackle to the turf. Well done by Finn Hudson. The ball going nowhere. Umpire realizes that. We've got another ball up on the near wing. Throws it up. He likes some high throws up the umpire. Comes out wide. Some handy work. Altamore started the handball passage and then it's converted into the 50 by Fionn Keane, the other co-vice captain. Comes to turf. No clear victor out of this contest. But it is once again, as it has most 
of the time in this quarter inside the Ford 50 for CBC. Yep, and they're, uh, they're pretty good with their clearances. It just comes out a dribble kick. It won't make it to the boundary, so two on one Blackfriars way, but guess what? They go the body and not the ball, and everyone runs past it, and the umpire says it is a CBC. It was funny, all the players wanting to be physical. They're at that age now where they want to push each other around, and, that, and they all went at, the, uh, went at each other, and the ball stopped. Player on the mark, very animated here. Well, There's uh, Taj Marchioro. It almost looked like Marchioro tried to jump on the ball to conserve it, so if he wasn't tackled illegally, he could have been penalised. Just off to the right, and the Black Forest crowd erupts. As well, you would. One goal's three now, and that reads four scoring shots to two, yet Blackfriars Priory are in front. And they could take that lead into the end of the first quarter. It's but interesting right when they're now, kicking, it's different player kicking in, isn't it? I'm not sure, but they, they tend to just come long, but they stick to the boundary, don't they? Yeah, a lot of community football leagues like to use one player for most of the kick-ins, but looks though like Blackfriars is changing the pace a bit. Eventually the high tackle is called. Daniel Shepherdson's going to get the free here. So not 100% sure what the free kick ledger is, but it definitely Played in looks sunshine like he's been well. able to drag a few extra ones in. Umpire um, redirects him to his mark. He can't step off of it. And yes, the sun is over the ground, Tony. We've had a bit of a wet weather week, but it's a nice day, that's for sure. Set up, rolls down to the tip of the square, but Blackfriars have goal side and they hammer it over the line. A bit, uh, they went for Scully there, but the uh, CBC players were all... Ball came with him and the ball went over the back. I think they were at the front, the crumb. Ball went over the back and easily threw for pointers. Out it comes again now, outside that 50. But it's a big pack congestion. Just a little handball to himself here, the player, and bumped across the line. And uh, Blackfriars get it out of play. Oh, and there's players just carrying on a little bit. Here and there, the boys are trying to sort themselves out. No one at the back of the pack. There is a CBC player at the back of the pack now. So if they can get this out the back, they're away here. Let's just see what the umpire does. Maybe he's going to throw it directly to him and uh, just about does there. So let's just see as the teams come together. A little bit of argy-bargy. It's no good being tough after the uh, whistle's gone. It's when it's your turn to go. So there'll probably be a little bit of chanting and uh, carry on here. Just a quick thank you to our sponsors, of course, uh, today. Dartfish, Simon Black Academy, Sports Interactive, and our uh, team, uh, sorry, our scores are bought, was filming footy and also the sport all scoreboard. We will take a short break and be back in a moment.
to the uh, big game down here, Black Friars and CBC. And CBC started out very well, Indy, and uh, got the ball inside 50 because uh, big Thomas Scully up there, they're really looking for him. And I've been really impressed with their defence work. Scores currently, though, uh, Black Friars came back and they've uh, kicked two goals straight to one goal, four to Christian Brothers. Uh, have you seen the game, patterns of play, clearances and a sense of theatre in the mud? Yeah, well, the scoreboard does read a Blackfriars lead, but what leaves me more curious is the fact that really statistically and more importantly in the territorial game, it does seem like the Christian Brothers have been on top, especially in the early parts of that first quarter, but even the later stages, a lot of repeat entries, but one good thing that Blackfriars were able to do was grind out a lot of stoppages. Maybe their intercept work wasn't quite as impressive as the Christian Brothers. I noticed CBC taking a lot of intercept marks down the other end, but I did quite like the work that Blackfriars had on their...
Oh, but they keep it alive. They got some runners. They've got a soccer and they sneak it through. Very clever hand pass work from Blackfriars. Getting that goal, I think, was Samuel Vanderwood. Just he ran past, didn't he? he? Just knew the the right spot. We'll just have a look. If it was him. Looked like him. Just very hard sometimes with these numbers in the uh, uh, it could have been 37, could have been young Liam Hurst. We'll find out for you in a moment. As, uh, just a tell you what, five goals straight too, very accurate. As we're about 12, 12 and a half minutes into the quarter. All of a sudden, Blackfriars have dominated the second term and there isn't a win advantage, but it seems like the right side of screen is a favourable end of it. Oh, Comes out of the middle again here. There. The tackling pressure's mounting, in fact. The umpire eventually steps in, but that was after letting it slide for a bit. If you look to the left of uh, screen here, just for the viewers at home, it's about 50 metres to the next pack of players, so the ball could go to grass here. Mm. Coming out now, oh, and ooh, almost looked like CBC wanted to preserve it there, but played it wiser. Marcherino comes out further. Kelsey kicking along the far wing. Sneaks into the Ford 50, but the options aren't very favourable. The setup doesn't matter though, they've got to run. Keen lets sail a kick, but only makes it as far as a minor score. It is two goals six to five goals straight, Tony. Yeah, and I'm just trying to see. I reckon they've got a. Uh, they've got three big fellas here. They've got another big fella out this side. I'm just seeing whether he's in the ruck or not. I'm trying to pick up who that is. Number 28 there, Lachlan Hancock. So they've got height which was identified by Blackfriars pre-game, talking to their coaching panel, but uh, CBC with the height, of course, but Blackfriars are the team that are um, on top at the moment, and that is number 28 there, Lachlan Hancock. So he's going to go up, leaving both uh, Fion Keane and Thomas Scully in the forward line. So they've set up structurally with height, trying to get it into the big fellas. Of course, what happens with the ruck tap? doesn't really matter, it's what happens next, it's this sort of stuff, it's the clearance work, so the old Lee Matthews, it's not who wins the tap, it's what happens next, and uh, that young man has uh, tried to take on two CBC balls and uh, just bundled out, but uh, I like the endeavour by Joseph Kelly there, so throw in comes in again and you can see Lachlan Hancock, he's a big solid, both of them are big solid players as well, big bullocky types, player free on uh, his right, goes exactly to that player and that is Daniel Shepherdson left alone there and that was dangerous and that's a grab and the umpire says no juggle too high and that was locked and close so well constructed and uh, Blackfriars weren't aware there that Shepherdson was on his own on the check side or the uh, away side if you like taps in oh Coles doesn't want to take it yeah Keep a little shorter and that might have been a wiser option because it's actually closed in on the angle and sent it up the ball a bit more I reckon taking this might have been a if it is Christanti yeah so uh, Norwood player young Joseph so Joseph one of the out here. Is to get them back into the game. They've missed opportunities, but they are only down by 12 points, the same margin they lost by last year, we might add. It's a powerful They bring it back to six. So they've kicked uh, two goals, two for the quarter to Blackfriars three straight. So if, uh, once again, if you calculate it, they've actually had more scoring shots again. Um, but Blackfriars looked very strong at the start of this quarter and as the quarter's gone on, CBC have uh, fought back and you're correct, in six points in it now but of course, three goals, six inaccuracy, nine scoring shots to five. If those of you tuning in are questioning what is that deafening sound, it's the <laughs> horn that CBC have just pulled out in their cheer squad. Tackling pressure applied here in an effort from Joseph Kelly, the ruck. Brought back into the umpire's hands. Another throw up. CBC trying to get it out to front side. But they can't find the runners required. Comes out the other way. Nathan Forby finds a short option. Haskey. And now it's Haskey. He's so had they've a good got it out of the centre square here, but they might still want to use the corridor. They actually run themselves into a bit more trouble than expected. Misfire the hand pass. The CBC tacklers are coming in hot pursuit. 
That's not going to be called. It's going to be called incorrect disposal. Well, the poor old Ruttman had his work cut out there, India, as that ball came in. He had to put the uh, put the speed jets on and uh, got after it. But he says that made CBC the chance. Max Daniel and takes the mark. No, Max Thomas Daniel was Scully. the delivery man. Yeah. Sorry, Thomas Scully. He's so a familiar name to be grabbing the ball. They're inside the 50 because uh, we just mentioned they've structured up with the tools and they pop it in high and uh, Scully takes a grab. So who got that one in was, um, who did you say got that in? Was Max Daniel, was it? Kicked that in? Yeah, He's that was Max Daniel, the skipper, yeah. the delivery man and the receiver. And Thomas Scully Come steps here. in. Yeah. Pinpoint accurate drop punt. Online. We got level scores here at Prospect Oval. Well, they've kicked the 3-2 for the quarter versus 3 straight. And uh, that was a nice goal. And as I said, good coaching down there. They've structured up a little bit differently. Identified what the needs were and get it to Scully. And that's a nice kick. You can see that lad in the uh, in his own fan club here. Yeah, well, one of the fans actually went to the side, looked at the Black Fire squad and said, you'll remember that name. Yeah, and uh, he just stayed under 18s and uh, don't know too much about him, but maybe a fair chance of being drafted, just looking at him uh, getting around here. But out they go again here, Black Fire's under pressure, the CBC. You can see the three or four purple jumpers there, and that's our uh, dead set 20 minutes. Takes us into half time, and what a game we've had. Black Fire's there in that quarter came out. First five to ten minutes looked really good, and CBC structured up differently, fought back, and uh, they are now equal on the scoreboard. So we will take just a short break, analyse things, take our notes, observe what's happening, and uh, be right back in a moment.
and welcome back, uh, folks, to the big game. Well, Blackfriars and CBC, and I'll tell you what, India has uh, certainly stood up in regards to a great quality game. I, as I said, I thought I'd just turn a lot, turn up and see a normal game of footy, a little bit of a kick and a catch, and two teams having a little bit of fun, but they are absolutely playing for keeps here. Yeah, I think some people mislead the context of things like intercol matches being along the lines of an exhibition game, but I think it's way more than that. In fact, intercol games like this being at the end of the year after the school season's finished actually makes it more exciting. It's like the players anticipate this to be their concluding moment, and everybody wants to end a moment with a bang. And right now, the moment is going to be the second half of this game, though. It's all poised start, five goals straight to four goals six. You wonder if CVC could have been up by more if they kicked it at Sterling. And uh, the testosterone is flowing freely as the soccer clubs, the two teams, so the, uh, we believe the second and first division both won. And they are here with their, uh, with their cups. And there's a little bit of banter going on between the uh, two tier squads. And tell you what, the, the banter might have to be saved for another half because it's no certainty as to who will win this game, Tony. I'll tell you what, there's uh, the teachers and everything down in front of us. There's four or five of them just looking and nodding and, and so on. But uh, you try and hold up about 60 or 70 young lads. They've got the cup there as well. And uh, she's on for young and old in all good fun. I'll tell you what I did notice. I had a little break there. We um, went down. There is security here if required, but <laughs> touching wood, we don't want that to happen. So back to the game, as we said. Black Fries, of course, five goals. And uh, that first five to ten minutes of that second quarter, Indy, they kicked those two or three goals early and uh, you know, went out to maybe 20-plus 20, 20 lead. And uh, CBC come back and they kicked the three goals uh, three goals, two for the quarter, so they kicked five scoring shots to three, and uh, as we said, they struck it up differently. Two tools up forward, the ball came in, they started winning clearances, and they scored well in the, in the uh, last half of that second quarter, and we have an even game. Uh, how have you seen the forward entries by both teams? Well, I think the forward entries have been similar. Both teams have elected to go long ways rather than keeping the eyes peeled for short penetrating passes, with the rare exceptions, of course. But what I find more interesting is the defensive solutions that the teams come up with to those forward 50 entries. Now, the Christian brothers have been a very good intercept marking team so far. They've been able to get their hands up in the air. They've kept the aerial game in the defense. They're a man-on-man team. It's a system that works. But Blackfriars, on the other hand, when their defence is thrown under the pump, they try to get the ball to turf. So they spoil, but they're always the first to the tackle, meaning that they cause a lot of stoppages, and stoppages in the defensive 50 seem to be quite favourable for them as they manage to get it out to the outside. They've had some good handwork ability that's helped them a lot to get there. And they had, uh, what you mentioned there before, when they went forward, they had a uh, big number 11, Joseph Haskey, and... Magnus Lyons at times there early in the quarter taking some good grabs and you know, players like Forby out on the wing, uh, a couple other players there, Finn Hudson playing good game and uh, uh, Joshua Stodden of course so they've, they've had their patches at times getting the ball out to the runners um, but then you come across the CBC and as you said they uh, they really look good through the middle there, I really like the look of Max Daniel he, he gets uh, a lot of ball there he, as we said, in one bit of play there, he's on the ground. He then got the next uh, bit of play, got the clearance out of the middle, and then he did that beautiful kick in forward and, of course, uh, kicked the goal. So he's either giving it to the forwards or he's following the ball down and being a forward as well. So uh, very good player there. Uh, Ty, Ty uh, Marchioro, number 17, been quite influential out there. Really like watching him get around. Um, and it goes down. Kristanzig, of course, is a bit of a bull, number 20, Nord player. Uh, and, of course, a big one, Thomas Scully. Uh, Thomas Scully in there. And Fion Keane, number 30 in the ruck, who we see again in the ruck there. And he tends to give them first use of the ball if they can capitalise in the middle. So you can see now they've got uh, two players behind the ball, behind the ruckman and one in front. And Blackfriars have manned up on them as the ball... 
goes up by the umpire and he actually throws it up quite high this time, Indy, and there he is. I like the second effort. He's done that a couple of times, though, but he puts his teammate Zarella under pressure, so Forby has to select the left, and I don't reckon by the look of that kick that he's, <laughs> he's done that too often. You just see him on the outside, so he's a defensive winger on the outside of this pack, and he's two or four metres off his opponent there, and which is, I'll tell you what, I'm impressed with uh, Keane in the middle. Gives him first use, they go around, and here he is, Max Daniel, the player we spoke about, but centre theatre again, puts it right into the mud, and uh, number 44 there, Jason Mullane. So just next to that mud patch, there's a big puddle to the left of him. It's going to be a nice kick in, fresh ball, inside 50 CBC. Scully's actually pushed into that. They can't clear it here. They're under pressure, Black Prize. One handball, two handball, good vision there. And around the corner, that is a great kick by Harrison Delimore. I think also he's having a good game. Indy? Yeah, well, unfortunately, this kick here is intercepted. Out on the far wing. They look towards the corridor, and that's also intercepted. So a couple of turnovers here in the early stages of the third. Black Friars and all the chaos come out with the ball. They go with a long one down the line. No mark paid, but the intended target brought it to turf, so there will be a ball up. Now, all of a sudden, the forward options are coming more compelling. Some extra numbers behind the ball for the Christian brothers, and it pays off here. They've taken a mark in the defensive 50. Yeah, they were good at this early, and uh, I've been impressed with them all day in the back line. Two, two on one kick, though. Three on one now. I'll tell you what, he's so good. He's, uh, that was uh, Marchioro. Gets it out, a nice kick across, and here he is again, the Scully. So, gee, he's got a beautiful kicking action for a big fella and puts it directly where they wanted that to be, CBC. And uh, this is number 99, Jackson Ritter. <laughs> With ball in hand. You don't normally see numbers going up into that high echelon. Well, he's dropped that short. The oh. play there. It's the play that got taken away. Can't quite get around. Gives it back though. It's in a good position. Black Fry is very smart play there. Their back Scully runs forward and uh, disappointing kick across to the pocket. Oh, it's on ground. Dangerous position. Player comes in. Picked up with one hand, pushed off with the other. And the boundary umpire says, oh, I'll ball it up. They're making hard work of it uh, up forward here. So throw in. Yeah, none of those forward 50 entries are coming in easy for the Christian brothers. And it's not so much pressure on the kicks, but it's pressure on the targets. Ball comes in. Looked like the tap down was from Thomas Scully, who was doing a bit of pitch in ruck forward duties there. A free kick comes. So Scully CBC's CBC way. Play. So free set shot opportunity coming up. Taking the free kick, we're going to get a look at. Although we believe, looking far, well, the man giving it to a teammate was Marcherino, but he's not actually going to be taking the kick. He's being rooted on by the crowd, though. That's as much as we know. So we'll keep an eye on who's taking this kick here. But first, who had to let sail? Strong first kick. set shot. Well, unfortunately, he couldn't hit a score, and as a result, they don't get the lead, and it still remains a tied game early in the third. Well, it did go straight, straight out of bounds on the full. That's the trouble. So player plays on, puts himself under pressure, and he goes the barrel. There's a huge kick. The big fella there, the ruckman there, Fee Keen goes up, and sees this player's impressive, super impressive, Max Daniels. Good vision, lowered the eyes, picked the player out, almost... Brought Toby Cade towards the ball there, and that's the difference between just blasting that ball in and actually selecting the player and kicking to him. So well done there. And uh, yeah, so Toby Cade gonna line up, probably 30 out, slight angle, lifts the ball quite high, gets hold of it, and that sneaks in. And he has his first on the board as well. And uh, they rush ahead now as we're about Four, four minutes in and the CBC crowd have erupted because that's the first time they've hit the front today and uh, they are oh, sorry they were yes uh, they are in front and uh, the fans here are very excited I'll tell you what I love cross pollination in sports soccer football basketball hockey whatever learn from the others but today it's about support 
and the fans so went up to, to the Black Friars squad afterwards and said, look at the scoreboard. I don't think it's their first lead of the day. They might have led six points to seven early in the first, but it's probably as far back as you'd have to go. So very early stages of the game. Right now, the momentum is in CBC's favour. Another fantastic kick from Max Daniels. Superb delivery. Comes out to the intended target. The kick set off from the centre square. Goes to the tip of the goal square. The crumbers are waiting. It's not to over. The Christian brothers kick off the third quarter with the first two goals. That one coming in style from a centre clearance. Tony, the midfield game has pretty much been where this match so far is getting determined because the Christian brothers, even when they were down on luck and not winning the territory battle, they're still winning a lot of centre clearances. Well, I think there that was the, uh, I'd say that's the play of the day today, Indy. You see Big Keen gets it down to Daniel, kicks it to Scully, Scully kicks it in. Here they go again out of the middle, so they're all lining up now. And that's uh, Kostanzik, the Northern player, and Scully just stands out. Same positioning, this time kicks into a player leading. She's tried to run onto that. Oh, and a big don't argue there. Gets one back as well, that's quite a receipt. As the ball is uh, on the wing here for Blackfires, but under pressure. Keep talking this bloke up and have a look at it. Almost a repeat of the last three entries. Daniel to Scully. Scully the long kick this time, doesn't pick the player out, goes high and long. Ball's on the ground. If Marky Oro's in here, well, it will be a, a carbon copy, but down on the ground it goes. But that piece of play was um, certainly play of the day, and it's almost repeating now. Marky Oro's actually back here on the 50. They've got a free, free player, Costas. They've set a wall up. Umpire throws it up. Tap down easy as you like, but oh, high, wide, and handsome there by. Matthew Altamora Mare, and he's going to give the ball back to Blackfriars. And number uh, 32, Michael Katianos, is the player I'd been calling earlier. I'm going to say one thing prematurely, Tony, and I don't like being the early bird, but I'm probably going to have to eat one of my socks if Max Daniel doesn't get BOG. <laughs> His kicking has been this absolutely fella. off the charts. And here's Thomas Scully. He's probably the only other man who would be oh. a reasonable substitute for that particular award because Thomas Scully is playing a really good he game. Can, he can do both, Indy. He, uh, you see here, he can do the long kick in, he can also hit the lead and there it is. So he's had last four kicks, two long bombs and two short kicks and this is uh, Toby Kay with ball in hand. Toby Kay kicked one early in the quarter I believe so this is for goal number two in a quarter and to make it three in the quarter for CBC. In he comes. So be oh, the journey, but there's another mark. Mark for mark in this game so far. The aerial game is all dominated by the Christian brothers. This looks to be number 45, Ethan, Ethan Kelsey. Kelsey. Mark next to him, so he's been having a good game as well. So to finish off mark. the chain of marks, such a successful passage of play. And you could potentially be calling this the Premiership quarter right now. It's three in a row for CBC. I tell you what, the crowd's happy. They've erupted here. They've kicked uh, three goals and we're only eight minutes in. And it's all been one way. Well, there's a little bit of a chance. So... Uh, I hope they spend as much time on their homework as they do on their learning these chants and giving a bit. Oh. <laughs> so uh, they're on in. The, the man in the beanie there for Black Fries is almost on his own and uh, fighting them back. So uh, a bit of fun and games. Anyway, they're up and about now. Don't go too early on them, no, but they are 18 points up in front when it was uh, a tie, actually, at half time. So let's see what happens in the middle. Can they do anything different? It's almost a tap between the ruckman here, two taps. There's their goal scorer just getting that ball out. Oh, bounce is all pushed into that. They're dangerous there. This player's just come on again, Daniel Shepard, and so they've got some good players in the midfield. Tries to pick them out and uh, chopping off. That's courageous play by Harrison Delmore. 
takes a bounce. Has he got anything to go to? He elects to go long to a player standing uh, three or four metres off his opponent. And they're out now. Can they get inside? Almost let the play on. Tried to trick the player on the mark. Didn't. Gives a handball off now. They come inside 50. High kick long. Good set of jukes. Very impressed with the uh, marking out here. This looks to be Joseph Kelly, I reckon. 61, is it? He's having a look. He is. One of the few so, times this quarter yeah, they've nice really mark. been able to take a breath of fresh air and get it to Joseph Kelly from a passage of good, clean kicking. So and Kelly that happened in. when they were able to stretch the field out a bit more. They wasted no time getting that one off. It's gone all it's the way to the line. Goal. Yep. So he's uh, kicked his first, Joseph Kelly. Very impressive play at the far side there because the ball came in quickly. They got it out and shows that they can do it. Get one back on the opposition and... Uh, that was a nice passage of play, Indy, from half back around the outside, and then really good kick in. Kick to the player's advantage, so he could run on to that and kept it away from the CBC player. And a uh, nice set of jukes and a, a good finish by young Joseph Kelly. So the last ruck, ruck tap, the big fella, number 30, Fion Keane, actually tapped it to the opposition ruckman. Now they go up. Yeah, good tap forward. The winger came in for CBC. That's how good the tap was from Blackfriars. And we get another stoppage in play. Player come up out of the, the 6-6-6. So they've got an extra on the ball here, Blackfriars. And he's come roaring in the little fella. And uh, free kick here to CBC. So another centre clearance win coming out for the Christian brothers. A familiar tale in this game. Beautiful tackling pressure right there from Matthew Altamari. That's exactly what you want. Coming in hard and giving the player no chance to dispose of the ball. They come out with the next tap from the next stoppage. Oh, Although, Black Fries are looking to try and get a bit of run here. Fending off the man. Tristan Chick. How far? Yeah. <laughs> Went a little bit too far. Just tried to bite off a little bit more than he could chew. I think they've become a little bit centred on the physical rather than... The actual skill. He, twice there he tried to push players off when he could have just got the ball to boot. Young player come roaring up there, Thomas Dutton. He came out of the forward line a moment ago. Kicks in the centre forward. And Mark Chioro, uh, having a really good game. Both ends of the ground. Yeah, just poor forward conversion there from Black Friars. The Christian Brothers hold on. They save it up in the defence, but decide to play a bit by hand here. Ethan Kelsey. Couldn't hit the intended target by hand. In fact, someone looked as though he was just completely holding his opponent off. So Christian Brothers will get the ball back. No, it's going the other way. Oh, dragged him down. Lucas dragged Dioro him down. All right, so, so it was holding the man. Inside 50. There's a little bit of stuff going on off the ball, yeah. which isn't helping either team. And a rushed kick there. And That's it is called, last possession. Yeah. Yep, last possession. So no touch on the kick. That means Black Friars can bring it back in. So it's Thomas Dutton who kicks it, and it's intercepted once again. Patrick O'Riordan. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to stand up when there are so many defenders taking marks back there. That's the thing. So it was about time that he chimed in. Yeah, well, got a bit of an empty run here. Yeah, this. player coming off the bench. So it's 2 on one Blackfriars, a bit of trouble to work around. They handle the pressure well. Going off the left, that's a dangerous type of kick, oh, nice. but they got the support. Very nicely played. Now Haskey dodges around his man, goes into the forward 50. They're outnumbered. They haven't got goal side. CBC might want to rush it over for a behind. No, they've got some players on the outer to hand towards. But it's not saved up yet, as Blackfriars also gets some numbers back onto the forward flank. Kick it further, but it's intercepted in play. A lot of intercept defensive 50 marks taken in this game by the Christian brothers. They've loaded up here too, around the outside if they can get it across the cut. That's a high long kick though from the back pocket, so that'll be two kicks back by Blackfriars and a good grab by Sebastian Taylor. He tries to pinpoint a teammate, not try, he does pinpoint a teammate covered in mud out there. So Blackfriars, uh, interesting, uh, the last quarter I reckon all first half was CBC and... Um, uh, Black Fries and second half was uh, CBC. This quarter it's the other way around. It's been all CBC opening up that big lead. And now Black Fries are hitting back and uh, going to get another shot on goal. We can't tell you who the player is because he's landed in mud as we speak. He's going to kick from about 35 out, slight angle. 
if he gets this, he tell you what he likes off the leg. Have a look at him celebrate. He just stands and says, come to me, here it is. They've got their second, and that brings that margin right back down again to uh, just a couple of points in it. Nice kick too. Very good goal. So the first three goals of the quarter went to Christian Brothers College, but then hitting back with two at their own, Blackfriars have brought this back to a six-point game. That's a beautiful kick on goal. We can't actually see who that player is. We will try and find out for you as uh, ball back in the middle. We'll try to find out your secret hero of today in a moment, but right now the moment is at this next centre bounce. And this is the one that's really important. CBC, do they have the chance for an instant reply? They'll get it off the foot of Christian Chick, but it will come short. It'll fall short. It'll be snapped out of the defence, but not to a very favourable position there. Extra runners in the middle for the Christian brothers. Ultimately, those numbers pay off. They found the target, but the ball is coming in too hot for Ultimari. And now some tackling pressure forces the ball to be halted just outside the forward 50 arc. So the umpire throws it up here. Not a favourable position for the Blackfriars players to be working from. A rush clearance won't help much either, but a clearance of any kind could at least delay the territory battle a bit. They get it back through the chaos. It was a forced turnover, and that turnover not so forced. Intercept mark taken. Taylor goes further, gets it to a player. Zarella. The bench, yeah. Just it's backwards and forwards, a hard work here, Ooh. a bit of a soft kick, and uh, Zarella it is. He came roaring off the bench earlier in the game, and. Uh, He's getting his few possessions now, Indy, so he's going to come inside 50 with the kick. Puts Goes it right further, to the goal square. I'll tell you square. what, oh. puts it to the goal square. Boy, oh boy, there's a free kick. And uh, this is number 44, of course, Jason Mullane. He was up on the half forward flank earlier, and well done by young Zarella there. It's one thing to come on, but be lively and put yourself into the game. And uh, I think you almost thought that might have been so. <laughs> anyway, right in front. Go and get another footy because that one's kicked out of the park, and that is uh, Jason Malone. And probably say that's the settler now because that's their fourth fourth straight for the quarter. And uh, ironically, Blackfriars are sitting on seven straight, seven goals straight, 42 to uh, eight goals, six, 54. So the two goal exactly margin, and uh, Young Zarella's done well there. A couple of costly free kicks in that last passage and now CBC have just been able to settle the nerves a little bit. They're still up by two goals, not a massive margin, certainly not a game-ending margin, that's for sure. But See uh, young Jed Walker down there, number 72 in the back line, I said a bit of a cult look about him, but he, uh, he was instrumental in starting that piece of play off, I reckon, that left foot down the ground and uh, good player when he applies himself to, to playing the footy and not the other stuff. You can see in there, dangerous uh, Marchiora at the back of the pack. There it is, goes over his head. Can they get hold of it here, Blackfriars? They can't. It's in that little mud patch almost again here. Ball just popping around. There's Marchiora. He loves it in there, and he's good in the middle as well. Bobbling around. It's a bit of rugby as we speak there. The rolling mall now. They're out, Blackfriars. Well done. Very quick there. Get it across. Player just slips on the kick. It's going to go over the top. Dangerous position here for Blackfriars. Late whistle. Given. So this is a player who kicked the last goal, and I found out through our friends up the back there, this is Joshua Stodden, covered in mud, who has just kicked his last goal. And Interesting, Indy, you know, put yourself into the game and, and, and influence the game. Will yourself towards the ball, and you get a couple of possessions like this and put your team right back in it. If you've Could had, this be the one that brings them back within a goal, sorry. Well, if you've had a quiet game correct to half-time, then there's no reason why you can't be the hero of the next couple of hours to follow. Well, he's, he's had a good game so far, Stodden, very consistent. Jeez, I'll tell you what, he's got a long kick on him, has a look at it, and just offline. I almost watched the player rather than the ball there because the last time his celebration was huge. I'll tell you what, he might have to come off because that's their first point for the day. Wow. So uh, that's a blemish. Straight no, kicking all the way up until man. this point. Yep. Out it comes now. So he's down the ground a fair bit now, Tom Scully. Look at the runners comes Zarella. He's really injected something this quarter. Runs on to all player taken in the back. 
carried forward in momentum. And that's Jai Hart Kelly. Uh, that is number 35. Now, hang on. That is Daniel Heath, number 35. The two number 35s, as the siren goes. And, uh, yeah, interesting quarter. CBC really got going. And uh, once again, Blackfriars came back a bit. So, got a ding-dong battle with 11 points of difference as we go into the three-quarter time break. We'll take a short break and be back with you with the wrap-up. Uh, three quarter time huddle, and uh, well, what an interesting quarter it was. We set the play of the day when Keane in the middle, number 30, got it out to Daniel, who uh, he's placed the best on the ground, number five, Daniel, the left footer, uh, along with Scully, gets it down to Scully and Marchioro the goal, and they're really standing out. CBC dominated early with the three goals and really got the crowd up and going in front of us, and then Blackfriars, probably that last five minutes, the two goals and the, and the point. Uh, Scores for the quarter, Blackfriars kick the 2-1, CBC four goals straight, so they've got the lead currently at 11 points, and uh, what are your thoughts, Indy? Yeah, I think there was a bit of closure at the end of that quarter for Blackfriars to kick back with two goals, but they then gave back another one at the other end through a couple yep. of poor free kicks. So. I think going into this last term, it really does have to be all about the territory now because they have lost the territory battle too much in this game. They had a very good purple patch at the beginning of the second quarter. You've now got to be able to hold that out for a full 20-minute length term. I think you're correct because you know, the notes, we, we said they started out OK, but uh, just patches. Patches won't win you the game. They need to be uh, pretty consistent and get the ball down 
quite quickly and put CBC under pressure. I have noticed that CBC there, three quarters are, are really good down back, but um, Black Friars can score. And as we see, seven goals won. So that's eight scoring shots to eight, six, 14 scoring shots. So they have had uh, a lot of the ball, CBC as well. And uh, we are set for a ding dong battle. And I can't see Scully up forward. So he, we'll try and find out. Oh, there he is. He is up forward. So uh, interesting. He'll be at center forward. So one big tall. And then the runners, Mark Yoro's up forward. And uh, you're with Indy Rogers from the close of the last quarter. Massive final turn coming up. An 11 point game. There's a whistle. Three kick already. Well, not a, not a great way to set the tone for the quarter if you're a Black Friars player. <laughs> Nevertheless, coming out in the middle, Fionn Keane, vice-captain, co-vice-captain in fact. He finds Thomas Scully. He hand passes out to a man on the run. I reckon that was Ethan Kelsey that let fire a shot, but it's missed to the near side. I saw him lean after he kicked that. You know, you're trying to will that ball to curl a bit in the air and it just wouldn't do it. So. Player at full back just kicks out. So we see this, they haven't gone short once out of the back line, they kick long, and the trouble with that is it can come undone, and undone quite quickly, and CBC are going to load up again. There's a 50 to 25. Umpire drags him back. And uh, just have a look here. There's a 25. So players, probably within, I reckon that might be Ethan Kelsey. It looks like, or Malone, it could be Kelsey. And of course, Scully's big in the goal square. But he's got a strong leg on him. That's a good pick. And Scully just does a bit of body work. And I reckon that was Kelsey. I have a look at his team for there. But a strong pick from out there. And yeah, it was the winger there. So that, um, that 25 metre, very, very costly for Black Friars. And just gives CBC that little bit of breathing space again. They go uh, 17 points up. That's an extra point and an extra goal worth of obstacles to overcome now. There's time, but time is running a little bit thin, Tony. And, well, they have gone on that three-goal streak earlier in the game, but to actually maintain it now, that's just to tie the match. So there's a lot for Black Friars to overcome in this last term as we take it back to the centre. CBC coming out with the tap but the ball going nowhere as Blackfriars do bring out some of that tackling pressure so it's impressive for him Keane. he gives a second effort Jeez, that's a big hard tap but he, he goes in after it again a bit like Ben Hudson used to the pros Bulldogs and that you, you go and give a second effort look at the body go in almost too hard then there's the heavier body pushed him out and you can't do that trying to protect the ball drop as uh, they come forward now Blackfriars you've got to play if they can get it out for him it's in the mud Packed out by CBC to space, that'll do. Oh, player this way, that way. He's got around one, he's got around two. Hooks that ball around. The player just slipped over as they came towards it, but they're under pressure here. Black Fries, the CBC player goes backwards. Oh, just a quick fumble. Could be costly. In good hands with Mark Euro. He's taken it down and receives the free kick. Plays on quickly. Yeah, wasting no time, in fact. They do really want to stomp on the neck nice and early. That snap doesn't quite do it, but that's an extra point which could come in handy. It's now four goals off of taking the lead for Black Blackfriars Priory. And coming back in with the kick, it's a high one, but it actually stays within the arc, and it doesn't land into the hands of a teammate, meaning that a stoppage within the arc is probably a dangerous outcome to come out of that kick in. Keeney is a competitor, isn't he? Look, push, push, argy bard, he wins the tap again. It's not a little tap either, it's a fair squat. Five to ten metres with the uh, ball there, and Black Fries now come forward, chases on, geez, so uh, gives it a lot of time in the air. This is a player I've been impressed with, Jed Walker. Gives it backwards though, and uh, this player's tried to shrug off a few people today, Jason Stanzik, and just gets caught, and Black Fries are off. So the player who was tackled is looking a little bit hurt off the ball. In fact, he's in no hurry to get up. Teammate comes over to him now. I think that's Matthew Altamari checking on him. In the meantime, there's a stoppage. Right. So thankfully, it's a cramp. You should hopefully be able to get up. But the umpire has at least halted play until they can confirm that he's not feeling too bad. 
20 minute quarter, so this is going to take up time. Yeah, just checking that cramp. This is useful for CBC to tick a little bit of time off the clock. Ooh, the play resumes tackle. and, yeah, gang tackle lands with no conclusive winner. Umpire Payne South, of course, doing today's game and doing the big game Saturday with uh, Sacred Heart taking on Ross Trevor as well. Oh, there we go, out the back of the pack. They're doing a very good job today, the umpires. There hasn't been too, many, uh, too much noise from the sidelines. Umpire now, boundary umpire, throwing it in over there. It is a high throw there towards the centre of the ground. Another tap win, tap win there, but Black Fries, can they get a little player taken high there as he had his head over? Another player smashed to the ground. Uh, umpire deems it fair and Black Fries have the ball in hand. Well, they can't waste too much time, Black Fries, because it continues to tick away and there's limited time in this final term. They tried to hand pass it out to goal side. No one was there to really utilise it. They find a way to enter into the forward 50. A good spoiling effort there and good stand up from CBC. Anthony Sosa standing up oh, with that spoil. Say. Anthony, by the looks of it. Sosa, yes. Very well done, young man. He's got his hands full with Jason Kelly as well. Yeah, so this will be an interesting stoppage. It's in Blackfriars territory, which is kind of an unfamiliar tale actually they don't this dominate the Ford 50 entries and it's because of rush ones like that that it he usually was, comes out straight he away was free off the back of that pack they set that up then sorry oh. yeah beautifully coached this team is but unfortunately the turnover coming out of defense Nathan Forby there's been a couple of turnovers coming from the rebound 50s but they haven't been punished so this is where black fries need to step up is punishing these turnovers Hardy Kelly sets up a drop punt no mark coming down. Holding the man free kick. That's going to go the other way. So this is dangerous stuff. No, it's actually going to go Blackfriars' way. Joseph Kelly, so umpire was just signalling the opposite direction. But Joseph Kelly has a set shot here. He doesn't want to waste too much time with the 30 seconds because he's going to need as much of that time to spare for the rest of his team. And that kick hits the post. Yeah, you know, they're swinging momentum again, isn't it? We've seen both teams to start out well and then the other team comes back. So, oh, he's going to go long here, the CBC player, and that is a very long kick. And why oh, wouldn't he? Because it's Scully. I reckon he took one in the uh, red basket there. Not happy about it. He gives it to the player on the mark, and it actually wasn't him that, that uh, transgressed there. The player ran off down the ground. So, just a short kick wide. He gives the player another one going past. He's trying to get the end into the forward line. But a great oh. set of hands there by the Black Prize player. And I reckon is that uh, could be Joseph Haskey, I reckon. Yeah, he's back. A good set of hands there. Kick now. And this player is uh, Ethan Kelsey, I reckon, again. He's had a very good game as well. A bit of a bull. He's got a strong leg on him. Doesn't switch. Goes down the ground. That's that long kick, kick I'm talking about. There's Scully pushing out. Receives a free kick. They get going through these players. He plays on. Just a high long kick. He's looking a little bit fatigued. The player can't take it. The CBC ball on ground here. Only the willing. Players are calling holding the ball. The umpire says I'll ball it up. Pardon me. 20 metres out. Well, this game is getting to some dangerous stages for Black Friars there. In the defensive end of their ground, they're down by three goals. Yeah, so already time ticking away. Not a very high scoring quarter, but the time they've had, there's not much of it left to spare. From that end to end, you know, inside of 50 to 50, now inside the 50. One thing to get the ball in there, but do something with it, see if you can score. Here's an opportunity around the corner. It's a quick kick. And uh, just offline there too is uh, quick feet, Daniel Shepherdson. Well, score of any kind is going to make the job more difficult now. And Christian Brothers, it's there. Into Cole to lose, really. One three for the uh, 
He's everywhere, this player, this is Ethan Kelsey, he's on the far side, he's on this side, he's having shots. Runs on now, he has got that long kick, so he's going to put it in towards Scully. He's a very hard man to eat, but he's probably got a foot on every other player on the ground. He's had an outstanding game, as I said earlier. Indy, uh, Scully and also Max Daniel, very influential out there. And geez, I'll tell you what, Ethan Kelsey's up there as well with three of them. Well, plenty of names could be putting their hand up. I'm still bold on Max Daniel being the lock-in, but if it's going to be anybody else, it's probably this man, Thomas Scully. Goal number three. This is the dagger, and it's a pretty easy one to land. He's standing quite close to the target. And he still makes the job work. Shaky routine gets the job done anyways. And Christian Brothers are on their way to ending a two-game winning streak. For Black Friars. Rivers playing in the play towards the goal. Just remember, don't worry, don't worry, remember to set that up. <laughs> I'm good. So we're there and we, uh, yeah, game's starting to get away from them here. I did make a mistake with the time there. I think we were around 10 minutes in. So uh, a little bit of time here, but CBC running away with it here. And Watique's kicked his three now. So well done there. And they're up on the scoreboard. Jeez. 15 points up. Sorry, 25 points up. So yes, uh, over the four goals, Indy, as you've suggested. Slung around there, but slung the right way with Shepherdson. Goes forward. Now it comes around. They're having to run. Both players have had to run the opposite way to get the ball forward for their team, if that makes sense. And that was Delimore. Kicks it high along. That's a great set of dukes playing on the mark. That's a great set of dukes. CBC going to load up again just from half back. And there's uh, Ragnall trying to get the ball there. And this is a player. Jed Walk, I haven't minded his going. Good left foot kick on him. Gives it a bit of height. Gives the Blackfriars players time. And uh, Peter. That connect, like a player comes in Jed Walker, <laughs> looking a bit cheeky there. And this is uh, Kelsey again. We're going to have much luck with that. Well, this is something a little bit poor. It's not good to be showing this push and shove at such a late stage of the game. Kicking it out wide here, but sticking to the near side. Not much to get out of this game now. Almost deliberately rushed over by Thomas and these, but nothing thought of it. Shove has come in and Yeah, this is poor scenes unfortunately. There's a lot of whistles coming in here, a lot of players who are unhappy with the result without to witness. Let's see if the next clearance can reflect anything of 
fighting symptoms that are left within Blackfriars because that type of showcase and trying to take aim at your opposition off the ball is quite poor, particularly when the game's pretty much already over. You don't want to be... That first incident happened about 20 metres off the play, you, you're correct there, isn't you? So no one behind the, the two ruckmen here as the umpire throws in. So that might delay the game just a little bit, but either way, the result is quite yeah. academic at this point and set in stone. You knew that was coming. Courage here by that player. Very smart there. That's uh, jo Joshua Stodden. He knew they were coming for him, and he stood up. Courage, and uh, bang. So Stodden now picks the ball long inside the 50, but it's out to the right towards the pocket. Big Pete Pat Forms will be probably a little bit of argy bargy afterwards again. Boys are all up and excited, which makes for a very interesting last seven or eight minutes uh, as umpire throws the ball in. Not much time left in this game. The cup is locked in for the Christian brothers to take home. But right now, there's still minutes of football to be played out and energy to be spent. And football for the season will practically be over for these sides as soon as the final siren goes. So any ounce of energy left is worth using up here as you'll have an entire off-season to regenerate all of it. As you indicated with the statistics earlier in the day, the Black Fires have had the upper hand uh, over the years, and this could be a big upset for CBC. This will be one of the marks in the book, although it's coming back the other way, so not the stopping it is. But he's going back to set it up. He understands how quick he needs to check this as well. Runs in. He's put it through. He's put it through, but... And he wants the ball back quickly into the middle, so it's almost like it's something going on, there hasn't got much time left, probably about five or six minutes at the most, and uh, Stodden just gets in that limit, that's their first one for the quarter I believe. So how much time is ticked away in this corner, Tody? I reckon we're at about 15, because I missed the start, don't tell you. <laughs> so the 15 minute mark, then you've only really got five minutes to kick 19 points. Yeah, it's, it's over the three kicks, isn't it? So they need to get yeah. it in quickly. Pretty oh, much pinpoint perfect show. football is the only thing that can save them at this stage. They do come out with the next clearance. So that's win number one. Yeah. Man at front taking the mark though. Ticking the time off. Not according to plan. He was very calm when he came at that too, isn't he? Oh, up. out this way, that way. Starts to go to the next. side. Jeez, he took some dangerous position. Big, uh, big fella there was Fian Keane, who's had a great game. Now possession football. They've got Mark Yoro on down the ground. They go to him. So he's got it now. This way, that way. Comes in towards the cricket pitch. Two on one, but there's a 25 metre downfield. It's in good hands. Good decision makers and uh, very good playmakers. He now has a look around. Had a player running on. Going to have to go long, but have a guess who's there. Scully. Three on one, puts the big jutes up, down it comes, and he's been dragged down, has he? He has, and uh, there's a lull in the crowd as Scully takes a long time to get up, and he's going to be shooting from probably 45 out. And uh, Indy, that was just that settler that from the back line, down the outside they went, and it's in the hands of a very dangerous player again. Well, BPS haven't won too many centre clearances in this game, but that was one of the few wins, and Straight away it's intercepted down in the defensive end. So again, the setup from the Christian brothers has been fantastic today. And is this Thomas Scully potentially for goal number four? So here he comes. Probably gonna kick kick from 48 air. Not long legs, wide kick. It's long to the teeth, the goal, I'll tell you what, but uh, just off line for a point, so have a look, Indy, can they load up? Black fries here and, and get that ball out. They kick long all day on the back line. Here they come. They had to work off a miracle now. A miracle potentially out of reach. They're just desperate to get it down to the other end. No mark taken, shrugging off the man, happy to take it to the muddy patch. No player wants to go there. Lots of tackling pressure being applied. Keen finding himself involved in the midst of it, taking it to turf and grinding the game to a halt. He, he did go down straight away. I don't think Ball comes back. We've actually got a 
ball up in the centre circle, so what you could practically call a centre clearance at this stage of the game because... Let's hope he can walk it off, but he'll only need to cope with it for a few more minutes before everything comes to a conclusion. Strong effort there. Thomas and Nice is forced under a lot of pressure. Coming down there. Pull a high tackle. And players coming in. A bit of Margi Bargi creeping through, but 25 metre penalty awarded as a result. So just a little bit of lack of discipline there. It's not going to be relevant to the result, but you don't want to be taking it up to the opposition at this stage. You've won the game, just keep the nerves settled and maintain the result. But either way, Dallimore. Harrison Dallimore coming in for a goal, fair way out. So that's another goal to pile in, but not much time would be left. And the siren goes as soon as that goal unfolds. And that's how the game was written out. Tied at half time, but CBC overtook their opposition in the Premiership quarter. And it's now a 14 point win for this Intercol rivalry. Their fifth overall, and they end a true game winning streak from Blackfriars. Absolutely. Well, the most admirable names probably for Black Friars. I think Nathan Forby gave his best efforts throughout the whole day. Magnus Lyons had a couple shots at goal. Samuel Vanderwoo was also really good. We're looking at a lot of players here who pitched in at certain times. Fid Hudson being the captain and Joshua Stodden also being the captain. He kicked two goals, so he was one of their better players. Joseph Kelly was the target going forward a couple times and added some tall presence to the team. but ultimately falling short of the mark. On the other hand, Christian Brothers, there's plenty of players to choose from. Thomas Scully didn't get that famous fourth goal, but he's been a massive forward presence today. The skipper in Max Daniel, though, is the real story. I would be absolutely shocked, as I said before, if he doesn't end up winning best on ground. The ceremonies are coming out into the middle of the ground, and there's been a bit of aggression between these two teams, but hopefully it can simmer down now as the celebrations are set to commence. It was an interesting game throughout the day. It was tied at half time, but it was five goals zero to four goals six. So a straight kicking Blackfriars team just couldn't keep the momentum. The losing team now sits down huddled up. But CBC on the other hand, coming in to celebrate a well-deserved win. This is their fifth win in this 16 year long rivalry with Blackfriars. say thank you to everyone for a momentous week, a huge event in both schools' calendar, and well done to both schools on competing in multiple sports across the whole week. Um, and to be honest, putting on some amazing games that were all tightly contested, and I, that was probably... This week has been a heart in the mouth sort of week for both schools and you put on so many great entertaining games that I think both Mr. Cousins and I are grateful for because you made it even better. So thank you to both schools. I invite Mr. Brett Knowles to present Black for, uh, CBC's best. 
Uh, thanks, Miss Conley. Uh, firstly, well done to CBC. Awesome game. You guys were so disciplined. Um, uh, much more hungry for the footy, and, and I thought you played an outstanding game, boys. So well, well done all round. Um, thanks to our boys. Had a really, really solid season. Uh, didn't go our way today, but um, uh, you know, particularly our Year 12 boys. A number of you played a number of years now. So well done in your, in your school footy. Uh, ventures, so good stuff. Uh, the best player that we saw, uh, uh, clearly a, a massive uh, task for us to beat this guy um, from CBC was Tom Scully. Yeah. Thanks, Brent. Um, thanks, Black Fries. Uh, as Brent mentioned, it was uh, always a tough game. There's always... Uh, high stakes and uh, you certainly made it a tough game for us but congratulations to our boys as well um, first time for a while I think isn't it yeah so we'll probably rejoice but uh, we thought your best player was Josh Stoddy Stoddy thanks So, firstly, I'll invite um, Black Fries Principal, Mr. Ruggiero, to say a few words about the week, and then we'll get on to trophy presentation. Thank you, Matilda. Thank you, gentlemen, for what has been a, a wonderful week. Thank you to CBC. Congratulations. And I think uh, in the spirit of Interco, I think a big round of applause for CBC with what they've been doing over the course of the week. Well done. It's wonderful to see the uh, positive rivalry between the two schools. Um, I've worked at uh, CBC, I'm, I was a Blackfriars student myself and now I'm back at Black. So um, it's great to see that tradition continue and uh, to see the sportsmanship that we witnessed over the course of this week. So well done. Uh, we look forward to uh, competing again next year. At least this year it's not a, a draw. It's always good. And thank you, Mr Lynch and all the CBC staff and the Blackfriars staff and students for all the work they have done over the course of this week. I'd like to present the football trophy to the captain of the CBC First A team. Firstly, the Black Fries, can't fault your effort out there today, boys. You gave it a all, so well done. Um, to our boys, finally, we've done it, so let's go and celebrate. To everyone, help this show go on. Cheers. The uh, CBC Cup, which has become uh, somewhat uh, broken, it. synonymous with uh, Wakefield Street, I will... Uh, hand over, hopefully for the last year in a while, uh, to Marcus, the head prefect of CBC. There we are. Congratulations, CBC, on your overall win. And thank you to both schools and all staff and students for the whole week. Uh, we obviously still have a few events. So on Saturday, it's a big gala day with a lot of our primary school playing their footy and their soccer games. So I'm sure they'll appreciate to see a lot of you senior boys out there. And I'd love to have you out there um, supporting a lot of our primary and middle school too. So... Congratulations on a great week, and hopefully we'll see you all Saturday. All right. So thanks very much for uh, all our viewers for tuning in. Hope you've enjoyed the big day out here with uh, Black Fries and also CBC coming out on top. The noise in the grandstand was sensational. We'd like to thank, uh, of course, our crew up there, Rowett uh, and Indy co-commentator for helping as the uh, players come past, of course, at the moment. Uh, so all our crew, thank you very much. Thanks to Filming Footy and Dartfish and also Sportal for the uh, supporting and sponsoring the scoreboard on the day. We hope you've enjoyed the coverage and uh, as CBC tune in uh, 
CBC going off behind us, but make sure to tune in Saturday. We've got the big game, of course, with uh, Sacred Heart and also <laughs> they are having a ball here as the lid falls off. But we've got Sacred Heart and Ross Trevor with the Intercol on Saturday. Thank you for tuning in, and it's goodbye from us now.